I had two rifle ball holes in my kit bag at the finish. I had to use a dead man's rifle, as mine was shot and broken. Words of Private Victor Trent, May 7th, 1915 from France. My name is Cadet Ethan Ronholm, Royal Canadian Air Cadets 340 Griffin Squadron. Approximately 2,000 Bruce County men and women enlisted in the Canadian Expeditionary Force during the First World War. Over 650 did not come home or died later of wounds sustained in the course of duty. This is the story of William Victor Tranter. Victor was born in Southampton, Ontario in 1894 to William and Annie Tranter. Victor enlisted in the Canadian Overseas Expeditionary Force only two months after the first declaration of war in September 1914. He was 20 years old. His attestation paper hints at why he volunteered so early. His uncle, Captain Lionel Tranter, witnessed Victor's signature. Lionel was serving with the 32nd Regiment. Commitment to military service ran in the family. Victor started in Belcartier, Quebec. This was the main training base for the 1st Canadian Division in 1914. At that time, Victor and his family had no idea that the war would last until 1918. Victor tells his mother in a letter on April 4th, 1914, that he went to an Easter service in a barn, saying, Well, I enjoyed the service, but I believe I would sooner be in St. Paul's. It always seemed like home to me. It was certainly great to listen to the responses of 400 men and to hear them sing hymns to the music of the mouth organ. St. Paul is the Anglican church in Southampton, Ontario. Victor sailed to England with the first Canadian contingent in October 1914. Spent about four months at training camps on the Salisbury Plains. Training was hard, and it was worse because of all the mud created by one of England's wettest winter. Victor writes a letter to his sister from the training camp in January 1915, hoping for better weather. I think we are going to put in two months training in France. We will be going to the south of France. Summer all the time. He also sends her some Irish green marble pigs, souvenirs from his leave in Dublin, adventure, and a chance to see the world, were some of the reasons men enlisted in the war in the early months. In addition to patriotism, opposition to German aggression, and personal ties to Great Britain, Victor's diary entries tell us a little bit of what it was like when the battalion left England. February 9th. Took cattle boat to quarters. Very uncomfortable. February 10th. Sea very wet and everybody sick. Received first ration of day. Bread and bully beef. Victor's first mention coming near the front lines was in his diary on February 16th, 1915. Could hear very heavy firing. All day and night. The following day, he writes, March to Armentier. Center of line, firing very loud, several buildings destroyed. A few days later, on February 20th, seeing real war for the first time, boys all cool. The first Canadian Field Artillery Brigade war diary entry for that day gives some context. Dug in with overhead cover from airplanes. Aircraft had dropped bombs which did not fall within a hundred yards of its position. The Canadian division faced its real test during the defense of St. Julian, beginning on April 22, 1915. In a letter to his mother on that day, Victor writes, I am writing again, and of course, as usual, cannot find much to say. We can only imagine all of the things he could or didn't want to share. His diary that day says, Left for his air canal near Yeeps. His letter was written just before he arrived at the Second Battle of Yeeps where the Canadian division suffered 6,000 casualties over four days. We can only imagine his mother's distress. I had my right and left hand men shot down, and the men that took their places were also shot. He must have been relieved that he was still alive, but frightened by him writing that. Three-fifths of our battalion killed and wounded. It was probably little consolation that he wrote. Bills and I have had a raise, and have been asked by our officer to consider it as a reward for work done in the field. An air of foreboding surrounds the letter, as he said. So I had some good chance to study the chances a man has against the bullet, and have concluded that they were all against the man. Two weeks later, he was in action again at Estabrook, France. The Canadians made small gains trying to punch a hole in the German front line. 
but there were over 2,000 more casualties within the week. Victor was one of them. He died in a hospital on June 10, 1915, several weeks after suffering shrapnel wounds at the Battle of Festiver. He was the first man from Southampton to die in the war. The town sent a heartfelt letter of sympathy to Mr. and Mrs. Tranter, commenting, He has quit himself well. His spirit is far above the trenches in which he fought, and we believe him safe in the care and love of the house prepared for him by the one who made the sacrifice glorious in giving himself for us. A letter from the chaplain of the hospital to Mrs. Tranter described the funeral of her son and enclosed a photograph of the cemetery and location of Victor's grave. He closes the letter saying, There is so little that we seem to be able to do for you, all who are so far away. Victor Tranter is an example of the courageous commitment that many Bruce County families showed, sacrificing and serving, fighting and dying for our freedom. We thank you and we salute. Let no tears that adore their hardships as the soldiers pass along. And although your heart is breaking, make it a Oh, God.